In this video, we're going to work on finding the volume of rectangular prisms. Before we get started, let's look at all the different parts of a rectangular prism. All prisms have two bases that are parallel and congruent to each other. In a rectangular prism, since all of the faces are rectangles, you can actually choose any two parallel faces to be the base. The only difference your choice will make is that what you will use for the height when we're finding the volume. And the height is the distance between those two bases. I like to use the base that um, the prism is actually sitting on, but there are multiple ways to do that. So let's look at these. In the, in the orange prism right here, this cube, we could label this part right here one base. This would be the other base because they're congruent and parallel. And then we could label the height as the distance between them. In the aqua one, aqua prism, we could also consider this a base if we wanted. And in that case, here would be our second base, and our height, height would be the distance between them. But I kind of think it makes most sense to consider what um what the prism is sitting on top of. So in the purple one, I'll consider these two the base. And I will label this as my height because it's the distance between both of the bases. Now, when we're solving to find the volume of rectangular prisms, your formula chart or your measurement chart is going to include the formula V equals big B or capital B times H. The, B, the V represents the volume of the prism. And the big B or the capital B represents the area of the base whereas the H represents the height of the prism. And so that's why it's really important for us to label what the height is and determine what the base is because we're actually gonna be calculating the area of the base first. So let's go ahead and look at a few examples. Find the volume of the rectangular prism. We see here that we have a rectangular prism. So we know we are gonna use the formula V equals big B times H. And I know that that big B represents the area of the base. So that is going to be the area of the rectangular prism. Or I'm sorry, the area of the rectangle. Excuse me. So let's go ahead and find the area of the base. The big B equals the area of a rectangle can be found by the base times the height of the rectangle. Or in this case, 4 times one and a half centimeters, which equals six centimeters. And we're talking about area, so it's gonna be six centimeters squared. Now, it's really easy to stop there because we've done some calculations, but remember that only represents the area of the base. Now, we're gonna to want to go back to our original formula to find the volume. Volume equals the area of the base times the height. I can plug my six centimeters squared in for the area of the base, and then I can multiply times the height, five centimeters, and find that the volume of the rectangular prism is 30 centimeters cubed. Go ahead and pause the video and try the same thing with the rectangular prism or the cube in the next problem. Remember that a cube is just a special rectangular prism where all of the sides are equal. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through this. We have a cube, which we know is a rectangular prism, so we're going to use volume equals area of the base times the height. I know that I'm talking about a, let's go ahead and actually label these because it's a cube. Let's label this as four inches and this is four inches. Cubes have all sides that are congruent. And so now I can find the area of the base. So I have big B equals four, my base, or base times height. 4 times 4, which equals 16 inches squared. And I'm going to go back to my volume formula, where volume equals area of the base times the height. I know that the area of the base is 16 inches squared. I'm going to multiply times the height of my cube, which is 4 inches, and I'll get 64 inches cubed. And don't forget about that um, to include your unit of measurement. Let's look at two more examples. 
A filing cabinet measures 5 feet high by 18 inch inches wide by 2 feet deep. What is the volume of the filing cabinet? Okay, now this one doesn't show a picture, and I personally love to draw a picture, even if it's not a very good drawing, because it helps me to understand and picture in my mind what's actually happening in the, in the story problem. A filing cabinet measures 5 feet high, so I'm going to label my filing cabinet as 5 feet, by 18 inches wide by 2 feet deep. Okay, so I can label this as 2 feet deep, and hopefully you caught that it it didn't actually include the units of measurement that were the same. So we see 18 inches, but we can't just write 18 inches. We're going to have to convert that to feet. So I know that 18 inches or that one foot is 12 inches. So that's one foot. And then that would leave me with six inches left over. So I can write that as one and a half feet. So now go ahead and go back to my original formula. Volume equals area of the base times the height. I'm going to have to find the area of the base first, which I know is base times height. So one and a half times two, which will give me three feet squared. I can go back to my, I can go back to my original equation. Volume equals the area of the base, which I know is three feet squared times the height of my filing cabinet, which is five. So the volume of the filing cabinet is 15 feet cubed. Go ahead and pause the video and try the exact same um, process with the next question. An aquarium is shown below. What volume of water can the aquarium hold? So again, we're looking at this same type of problem, rectangular prism. Volume equals the area of the base times the height of the prism. I'm going to go ahead and find the area of the base over here. If, you, if it helps you to highlight it or shade the base, I always like to do that as well. 12 inches by 3 inches, which gives me 36 inches squared. I'm going to go back to my original equation. I know now that the area of the base is 36 inches squared. And I know the height of my aquarium is 8.5. I know that eight and a half can be represented by eight and five tenths, and that's a little bit easier to work with. So now I can do my math and see that the volume of my aquarium is 306 inches cubed. Let's go ahead and look at a word problem where we have to do a little bit more work because we're not given all of the information says a gift box is wrapped in gift wrap and tied with a bow. The box can hold 288 cubic centimeters. How wide is the box? So if you notice in the questions before, it's been asking us to find the volume. In this case, it's actually asking us to find the width of the box and it actually tells us the volume. So let's go ahead and look at the information we're given. We know that the volume equals 288 centimeters cubed or cubic centimeters. We also know that we're talking about a gift box and it gives us a picture that shows us a rectangular prism. So I know the formula is volume equals the area of the base times the height. So this time I actually know what the volume is. So I'm going to plug that in for volume. I don't know the area of the base yet. But it does give me some information here in the picture. I can see here that the height is represented by 8. So I'm going to solve this just like a one-step equation where I'm isolating B or big B by itself. So instead of, I'm going to do the inverse of multiplication, which is to divide. And I'll get that the base is equal, the area of the base is equal to 36. So big B equals 36 centimeters squared. Now, is that what the question asked? Um, it's really easy to stop there, but when I go back to the question, it tells us it wants us to ask, find out how wide the box is. So I'm going to go back, and I know that big B, the area of the base, is equal to base times height of my base. So I have 36. And I know from my picture right here, my base is 6. But I don't know my 
height for the width of the rectangle base. And so I'm going to solve for h. I do the same thing that I just did, solving a one step equation. And I can see that 6 is equal to the height or the width of the box. So 6 centimeters represents the width of the box. This is our last question, so try this on your own, and then we'll go ahead and solve it together. A swimming pool is in the shape of a rectangular prism. It holds 3,584 cubic feet of water. If the base measures 28 feet by 16 feet, how deep is the pool? Okay, so I told you earlier that I like to draw a little sketch no matter what. This isn't to be very realistic, but it very much helps. I know that the volume of my pool is 3,584 feet cubed. I know that my base measures 28 feet by 16 feet, and I know that I'm looking for the depth or the height of my prism. So I'm going to go ahead and use my formula. I'm going to plug in the volume since it tells me what the volume is. And then I'm looking to see if I know the area of the base or the height. Well, the problem tells me that I'm looking for the height. And it doesn't give me the area of the base, but it does give me the dimensions of the base. So I can multiply 28, so I can find the area of the base by multiplying 28 by 16, it gives me 448 feet squared. I can go back to my original equation and solve my one step equation by dividing both sides by 448 to find out that Eight feet represents the height or the depth of the swimming pool. Great job. Um, I hope that this was helpful in finding the volume of rectangular prisms. I'm going to show you five questions that you can practice um, to just get a little bit more experience with it. Awesome job.